going on folks good evening it is 7 30 p.m west coast time here on august 21st august october 21st but we're not going back in time 2020 is the date and um wow yeah it looks like uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up over the last 24 hours here um, pretty much all over the globe you can see a wide variety or a wide spread out area of earthquakes from the Solomon Islands um, up through the Indonesia area also into China that earthquake right there a little bit older and also over here towards the uh, the Greece region the Mediterranean Sea area seen some earthquake activity out there um, that's been picking up uh, over the last 24 hours there and that's uh, kind of looks like we're getting back into the re routine of things uh, if you know what I mean as far as plate tectonics go, it doesn't seem like there's too much of a holdup uh, when it comes to the plate shifting at the moment. Uh, a lot of activity uh, was quiet over the last couple days following that 7.5, 7.6 up in Alaska, but uh, that definitely is not the case, it looks like, um, over the last 24. And uh, that could be a good thing cover a little bit of earthquake activity out there around the globe there's the earthquakes I was talking about in the Mediterranean Sea region just uh, southwest of Greece here 5.2 being the largest in this cluster of low quakes a little bit uh, looks like they had a 4.4 right smack there and also some movement down here um, in this area of the Mediterranean Sea and as I mentioned, earthquake activity in China as well. 5.1 earthquake there. The latest quake on the globe is that Solomon Islands being a 4.7. So yeah, gen general activity, you know, as far as these plates getting, uh, getting back to some shuffling, it looks as though things are getting back to the routine of uh, pressure transfer and plate adjustment it seems like it was hung up for a while there following that 7.5 uh, 7.6 up there in Alaska so who knows uh, it looks definitely looks like things are picking up as they uh, should be activity out around Texas as well Toya Texas hmm, kind of interesting never heard of that area a little 3.0 down there looks like east of El Paso, Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, some activity up there in Idaho as well. Let's go ahead and bring in the all magnitudes here real quick, and you can see the uh, general general movement up here in the Northern California. Had some activity uh, near Lake Oroville and areas to the west as well. This area uh, north of Santa Rosa is the geyser area. It, which is uh, very active uh, and that's active on any given day any given hour that you look at the map there's just always um, earthquake activity taking place there we would start to worry if we don't see earthquake activity there um, will it still see some activity to southeast of the, of the uh, region And shooting down south some more movement down here near the Salton Sea area a couple small quakes popping off not anything big but just something to keep an eye on as we could see this area start to swarm again and what else we got out here folks um, I was wanting to cover that Seattle fault tonight but I'm not gonna be able to do that again so I'm gonna have to uh, wait for a night where I have a little bit more time. Let's see what else we got. Some movement up here around the Washington area. Looks like some Mount St. Helens quakes as well. Or at least right around there, a little small microquake. Also up here around Mount Rainier. See a couple small microquakes there in that area. trimmer map activity is dwindling down it's looking pretty quiet we haven't seen it this quiet in over two weeks uh, looks as though maybe the slow slip trimmer event is coming to an end uh, 
the event that occurs every 14 to 16 months. And um, they, oh, it's looking pretty quiet, looking really quiet. There is some movement uh, here in Northern California. I think this has to do with the surface quaking that we're seeing around Mount Oroville, Mount Oroville, <laughs> Oroville Lake, and also areas over here towards the Willits area. Uh, just a little bit of tremor there along the Cascadia subduction zone. Still a pretty good sized blob of it here on the Washington, Oregon border area. But it uh, looks like activity is dwindling down and that, that's definitely a good thing. So with that earthquake activity showing up there around Mount Rainier, just gonna zoom in a little bit and and kind of see where this activity has taken place over the last oh, couple weeks or so. See this goes back an extended period into September. So generalized small quakes, which is really expected around any volcano, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's active. Um, here's a little uh, see if we can get this thing to pop up a little bit. Let's go to the previous map here and uh, see that looks kind of crazy, doesn't it? But I'm not for sure exactly. Those those kind of look like uh, man, I don't know. It kind of looks like an earthquake swarm, right? That's kind of what it looks like. But if you think about the size of those quakes, right? That I pointed out, they're like 0.3 and 0.6. Um, throughout the last two weeks. These earthquakes right here are going to be them. These defined lines of, of, uh, of quakes here. So all this other small stuff, I'm not for sure exactly what it is. Uh, I mean, if a point, a point three will do this, bring up on that scale, these little ones are just, uh, it's hard to explain or hard to Hard to figure out exactly what these are. I know Mount uh, Mount St. Helens was kind of showing some of that stuff as well uh, a few days ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see Mount St. Helens right here. Wonder, let's see what's this here. This is a three component, not found. second here I don't want to get too sidetracked we'll do this one here that's kind of off on the side see if this one looks about the same this could have something to do with uh, well this one's pretty quiet yeah this one's way different now some of these some of these things right here look like they're distant quakes being picked up potentially This is at the East Dome, Mount St. Helens area. I just don't see a lot of earthquake activity on there at the moment, but I'm uh, going to have to get back and check on that once again here. I keep getting sidetracked on it. Uh, Yellowstone National Park real quick here. Not a whole lot of activity here either. A lot of wind events going on up there, some snow moving into the area. If you're watching the Yellowstone National Park uh, webcam, you'll see that uh, there's snow and off and on all day today. Not uh, any earthquake activity up there that I can see anywhere in the mix. These are all interference wind events, similar to what we could be seeing there at the Mount Rainier uh, seismograph station as well. I just don't monitor that region as much as I do Yellowstone, uh, but you can kind of look at it and see the similarities uh, of weather interference and whatnot that it, that's occurring um, throughout any given uh, seismograph station up here and it all shows up roughly about the same time here some stronger than others of course uh, but definitely not uh, these are not earthquakes whatsoever no magma tremor movement but uh, rather wind and uh, weather related events showing up there in that in that area uh, i got to scoot over here to this day in earthquake history real quick, folks. Uh, October 21st, right? 1907 is the date. An eight-pointer, big old eight-pointer mega quake out there in Ch to Jackie Stan region. Uh, looks like, wow, not the best outcome there. Uh, stating one of the world's deadliest earthquakes. Two earthquakes. 
destroyed that region, so not uh, not a good day for those folks out there back in 1907. Kind of just kind of look at the history there, and you can see where big quakes are known to take place. I mean, you think uh, well, this area is pretty active when it comes to uh, some movement. Uh, Hayward, California, the Hayward Fault, something we talk about quite a bit uh, on this channel. The M 6.8 struck back in 1868, 7:30 a.m. local time. Uh, the destructive waves from an earthquake on the southern end of the Hayward Fault quickly traveled across the San Francisco Bay uh, and beyond. This was before the 1906 uh, big earthquake there on the San Andreas. Uh, estimated magnitude between 6.8 and 7.0. This earthquake was one of the most destructive in California history. Pretty. Uh, pretty good sized quake there on the Hayward so that's in another area that can uh, show some activity there activity activity I mean earthquake activity let's see here see the Hayward fault this area right here you got Hayward San Leandro concrete jungle up here a lot of a uh, lot of population density in this area so 6.8 7.0 on this fault structure would do some enormous damage. Southern Hayward section right around here. You got San Jose. All this area is just outlined with massive amounts of people. Um, what, I mean, it's just, I don't like going down there. It's too crazy. Uh, so, you know, you got the Calaveras fault. You got many fault systems here on this side of the plate boundary. You got the plate boundary here, North American plate and the Pacific plate over here. The San Andreas fault is the separator the, I guess the, the main player in all this but there's definitely a lot of pressure and uh, dynamics at work here on all these other smaller faults and that just shows you how powerful uh, this this area is when it comes to uh, potentially producing earthquakes out there 1906 earthquake uh, was a big one but you know don't let these little fault systems out here fool you you can see uh, you can see some big ones on there at uh, any given time so all right folks i am going to call it a night uh probably forgot a few things but that's okay we always got tomorrow right or at least we hope we do have a good night we'll chat you guys a little bit later stay safe